Have you ever heard calories in, calories out, right? It doesn't matter as long as the calories are in the correct number for my goal. Well, that simply is false. And I'm going to be diving into that. So strap in, get ready for episode 236. Let's go. The future of fitness. How do you gain muscle mass? Fitness is not complicated. It's simple when you break it down. There's so much information out there. No fads, no diets, just plain simple habits. You're listening to the Bones to Bulk podcast. Hey, welcome to today's episode. My name is Brian Parody, and I will be your host today. And if this is your first time tuning in, welcome to the show. I am so glad you are here, excited for this episode. But before we dive in, I'm also super excited to tell you about my new Patreon page. If you have not, definitely head on over and check it out. It is Bones to Bulk. I will have it linked in the show notes, but I'm basically offering live workouts and live group chats in there. So, you know, you get different things depending on what tier you buy into, but you're going to be able to literally work out with me. And I will go through my whole workout. I'll answer questions while I'm working out. I'll explain what I'm doing. In addition, uh, some of the other tiers have where we'll sit down on a Zoom call in a group format and we'll be like a question and answer. And you can hear questions from other people, ask your own questions, and I'll answer them. Everything's recorded so you can go back and watch them. Or if you miss a live, you know, you can go back and watch it. So definitely go check that out. I'm super excited to be able to offer this and to start doing this and just connecting with you on a more personal level. So again, check out the Patreon page, Bones to Bulk, and I will have that linked in the show notes. All right, with that being said, let's dive in. So calories in, calories out. When I first started working out, I asked several people for advice. I was like, you know, hey, I'm skinny. I can't put on any weight. And they're like, well, you just got to eat more. And I'm like, yeah, I have been, uh, you know, I'm trying to eat healthy. And, And literally, I had somebody tell me this in a gym. And I don't think he meant any harm by it. He was a he was a massive dude. That's why I kind of went up to him and even asked him in the first place because I'm like, dang, I want to look like that. And I was like, you know, what what do I need to do? He's like, you just need to eat more. And I was like, oh, I'm trying to eat clean. And he was asking me some questions. He's like, well, just don't worry about eating clean. Like, just eat food, like shakes and burgers and pizza, and just get in calories. And I had done that. I when I started, I ate so unhealthy. It would blow your mind how unhealthy I ate. It makes me cringe just thinking about it. I would literally probably drink sixty to 70, maybe more ounces of soda a day. I would eat so many of those little Debbie snacks. Like it was insane. I would eat Oreos. Literally, I'm not kidding. Sometimes I would eat an entire sleeve in one sitting. I would, and again, I'm not joking with this. I would sometimes buy a half gallon of ice cream and have that for dinner. I'm talking the whole half gallon of ice cream. An insane amount of calories. And guess what? My body composition never changed. I never got to where I wanted to be. I just stayed skinny. I had maybe a little definition, but, and the reason for that is because the food I was feeding my body, yes, it was plenty of calories in theory, but my body wasn't able to do anything with those calories. And here's how it happens. Like somebody asked me the other day, you know, what's the difference if I'm eating 100 calories of bad carbs or 100 calories of good carbs. And the example I gave was, let's say you're drinking a glass of orange juice. And let's just say, for argument's sake, that it's measured out to be 100 calories, okay? When you drink that orange juice, your body absorbs it and it hits the liver because there's a lot of sugar and the liver is what processes the sugar. Now, the liver says, whoa, hold up. I can't handle all of you at once. I've got to handle you in small sections. So what it does is it takes a little bit of the sugar in and begins processing it and the rest, it stores it as fat because it can't do anything with it right then. The liver can only process some certain amount of sugar at a time. Kind of like you're going to an event and there's limited capacity in there and then the guy at the door is like, nope, sorry, nobody else is allowed in. We're at maximum capacity and the rest of you just go into fat stores. That's kind of how it works. So that's why, you know, that 100 calories maybe not be the best thing. Now, now conversely, let's say I have a 100 calories of oats, okay? I'm eating some oatmeal. Oats are loaded with fiber, which causes your body to process them very slowly. So I'm not getting that instant sugar rush to the liver. My body is slowly absorbing it, slowly you know, processing it through the body because it's a lot of fiber. The empty stuff will get just passed through me, the stuff my body can't use, and then it's gonna pull the nutrients to the muscle cells, to my body's cells, so I have energy, and it's going to be used in good ways, ways that my body can use. Where this really comes into play is, let's say I'm trying to gain weight. Well, obviously, 
if I have a fast metabolism and struggle to gain weight, my body's really not storing it as fat. Well, it is. It's, you know, if I drink the orange juice, my body's still storing it as fat, but what happens is my body burns that off. And so I just stay skinny. You know, those calories aren't being absorbed by the muscles. It's not helping my muscle growth. It's just, well, sort it as some fat and then the body burns off the fat. Sounds cool, right? Like I know people all the time who are overweight say, oh, must be hard being skinny. Well, it's just as difficult to put on weight because you still have to eat freaking extremely clean and healthy and it's just as much work as it is weight loss. Both sides of the spectrum are very difficult. Now, let's say the reverse is true. Let's say you're not prone to be skinny and you don't have a fast metabolism. Well, that 100 calories gets stored as fat and Rather than your body burning it off, it stays as fat and you gain weight. So that's kind of how the body processes calories. Just a little, a little snapshot of it anyway. There's a lot more to it. But I, I hope this helps clear up kind of why, you know, does it matter if there's just 100 calories in both? Why does it matter what I eat? That's why it matters. You know, your body's whole point, the whole point of food, we, we, we've become as a society, we think that food is just meant to taste good and satisfy our needs. In reality, food is simply our fuel. And you've got to change your mindset with how you think about food. I'm not saying you can't enjoy food. I know I enjoy food. I enjoy cheat meals. I enjoy things that don't do anything for my body. But your overall viewpoint of food, you have to think about this is to fuel my body and make me a better person. Think about animals. Animals eat food. Why? To stay alive. They don't, you know, tackle, a lion doesn't tackle a zebra and eat it because it's like, mmm, zebra steaks. It's like, no, I've got to, you know, kill the zebra and eat so that I don't die. That's the one sole goal of eating for animals. We, I'm not saying we have to approach it in quite as dramatic, but you get the point. Like, we need food to survive. We need food to fuel us. And so if we're just giving our bodies crap that it only can pull a few nutrients from, then of course it's going to get stored as fat or just run through our body if we have fast metabolisms. So you've got to change your mindset with food. Think about how is this food benefiting me? If I eat a couple Oreos, I can't expect my body to be able to pull nutrients from that and actually benefit my body. It's not. It's not going to, you know, make me a stronger, healthier person. Now I'm not saying you can't have a couple Oreos here and there, but what I'm saying is when we approach food from just a calorie in calorie out perspective, it's a very dangerous thing because then we run into, well, I'm still staying within my calories. You could take two people and let's say they both, they're, they're not underweight. They're not overweight. They're, they're kind of at a level, but they're not in shape, kind of the whole skinny fat thing. And let's say both of them begin a strength training routine, the same exact strength training routine. Then let's say one person eats 1,500 calories of just pure junk. I'm talking like McDonald's for breakfast, Wendy's for lunch, French fries for dinner, ice cream for dessert, just total garbage. Now, with 1,500 calories, it's not going to be much because you'll hit that real quick. And then the other person is eating really healthy food. So we're talking like they have some egg whites and oatmeal for breakfast. They have some chicken and veggies and a couple red potatoes for lunch. They have a healthy dinner of some salmon and some asparagus and some rice. They're eating healthy food that their body can actually say, hey, I can pull a lot of nutrition from this and actually help build up these muscles, help fuel my body. Those two people are going to look dramatically different by the end of two months, even though their weight may not change because they're only eating at a maintenance level, but because of the types of food they are eating. So, you know, calorie count is important. I'm not saying you shouldn't track how many calories you eat, but it's also important where those calories are coming from. You can't just say, well, I'm hitting my calorie goal, so I'm going to hit my overall fitness goal. No, not true. Now, in theory, let's say you're trying to lose weight and you're eating in a thousand calorie deficit and you're still eating junk food. Will you lose some weight? Probably, but long term, that's going to stop and you'll stop losing weight and your body will just remain in an unhealthy state. Not to mention, you're going to feel crappy. You know, one of the biggest things I find when I work with, you know, probably the biggest thing I get from my clients who I work one-on-one -on -one with is they say after about the, after the second week, once they start to get into the third week, they say, I feel so much better. I feel like I can think better. I feel healthier overall. I don't feel blah. I have more energy. You know why? Because the food they're beginning to give their body is actually fueling them and promoting their health. Their body is being able to run so much more efficiently. It's like putting water in a gas tank or like a premium high quality fuel. It's going to run a whole lot better. 
So I hope this helps. I hope it maybe clears up some misinformation. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. I am everywhere online at Bones to Bulk. You can hit me up. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Pinterest, YouTube, you name it. Uh, I would I, I try to respond to all my messages. So if you have any questions, again, feel free to reach out to me. And again, check out that new Patreon page. I'm super excited about it. Again, I'll have that linked in the show notes. Remember, no matter what you're going through, what is maybe causing you some grief, what you're struggling with, you can overcome any obstacle that stands in your way. You've got this.